Hey West here, Airstream Wanderings. Thanks for joining me today. And today I am going to talk about nine suggestions uh, for improving your painting. This is primarily directed towards people who are relatively new to this. And I do not want to imply in any way that I am a great artist. I am not. I tend to follow what other people do. I make all kinds of mistakes. And everything I have to say today is based on all the mistakes that I have made in the past and certainly mistakes that I will repeat in the future. But I thought some of this might be helpful uh, for people who paint and maybe you'll find an idea or two that works for you. And if you have other suggestions, put them down in the comments. I would love to hear that so that we can all get a little bit better. All right, step number one is to have a plan. And you may have heard the saying, uh, failing to plan is planning to fail. So it's really nice if you have an idea of what you want the outcome to be. It may turn out differently by the time you are done with it, but at least you have a plan. Ideally, you find a pot that you like, a shape of an actual pot, and you make the pot and then you paint it. But sometimes you just have a pot that you have done and then you have to figure out what uh, you will, how you want to paint it after that. So here's what I do. I typically just do a Google search with images. Uh, you can look at a number of different things. Uh, it could be ancestral, Puebloan pottery, Hohokam pottery, just ancient pottery. And one thing will lead to another and you can find a variety of different things that may make sense. And I actually make a file of different images that I like, usually in different categories. So I mean, like this would be an example. And I, what I like to do then is actually print them off once I've decided what I am going to do. I personally think that it makes sense to try to copy somebody else. Every time that I have tried to make my own design, and I, I'm kind of working on that, it doesn't come out as good. The people who made these pottery designs, at least for Southwest Pottery, they had it dialed in. I mean, it's really hard to improve on the work that was done, say, 700 years ago. Another great resource is this book, Messages from the High Desert. One, it has all kinds of great information about how to make pottery, uh, but it also has lots of great images of uh, old pottery that you might want to consider. So that's another way to look at it. The other thing, if you are a relatively new potter, try to pick something really simple if you can. Uh, you're more likely to have success. The times when I have had failure is when I have tried to do things that are too complicated. So, so here is an example of a pot that I think is a pretty simple design. It's a, just a repeating uh, design of triangles that continually get smaller and smaller. So the idea with this is to just break it into its segments and you can see there are basically four pieces to this. You make the marks along the way, you make marks on the top, you make marks on the bottom, and you, I just put dots where I want them to be and then I freehand the rest of it. However, it is okay if you want to use a pencil to mark where you want to paint, that's fine. I would suggest using a light touch to that because sometimes the lead will continue to show up once you fire the pot. One of the styles that I find more difficult to do is where the, the pattern just continues all the way around the pot. So there are kind of segments to it and they're going in a diagonals are tougher than uh, segments that are going horizontally and vertically. And when one runs into the other and they all join up, that just is more complicated. So if you are new to this whole business, this is probably a style that you might want to stay away from because it's real easy, at least for me, to make a mistake. Okay, hint number two is get the right scale. One of the things that oftentimes happens is that the pot you make is not the same size as the pot that you see in the picture. Particularly if you are a newer potter, your pot may be smaller. And so to get all of the images from the original onto your smaller pot, it just doesn't work. It gets too fine of a detail. Now, I'll give you an example of where scaling isn't very good. This pot turned out fine as a structure, but the, 
the image isn't right. Uh, it is too small. It's all the images in just in the upper half and I'm losing the bottom piece. So what I should have done when I made this is think about where the image is going to start at the top, where do I want it to end at the bottom so it fits. And I'm going to talk about building a section uh, a little bit later. Now another example that I think did work out pretty good was this one where the image just starts at the top, it goes all the way to the bottom so it, it seems to fit the pot pretty well. So think about the scaling of how your image is going to fit your pot. You also may want to think about the shape of the pot too because not obviously not all pots are the same shape. Let's go to number three. Step number three or hint number three is to draw out your plan in advance or to at least understand how it works. Some of these things look fairly straightforward and simple but when you actually start doing it they're not. So one of the things that I do, I'll make a print and then I, I draw lines on how it's all going to work so I understand how the pattern is. For another example, I'll draw it out on a piece of paper because I want to see how it all fits together. Otherwise, if I just start painting this on the pot, nine, nine times out of ten, I'm going to make a mistake. Or another thing, here's another example. This is a pot I made with little birds on it. It's a holocom kind of thing. And I wanted the birds to look like the original pot. And I practiced making this bird several times, figuring out what are the paint strokes that uh, I need to do. Now, in some cases, my birds aren't all the same size, but they are pretty much all the same shape. And so it tends to look a little bit better that way. So with this hint, practice what you're going to do so you fully understand it, particularly if your pattern is going to be fairly complex. Hint number five is to treat each of the sections simultaneously. Uh, most of the Southwest Native American pots are pretty symmetrical. And in this case, uh, the, they have these patterns and there's five of them. And so when you draw it out, I know that I can fit five on, or maybe, you know, maybe the original pot has six uh, segments to it, but it'll only fit four on your pot, and that's fine. So what you wanna do is divide it first of all into your four segments or five segments so you know what it is. As I indicated before, figure out where the top and the bottom is, that helps. And in fact, if you're going to know you're going to have a line across the top, I would draw the line there first. And if you know there's going to be a line on, around the bottom, and this doesn't, it breaks the line, but if sometimes you do have a band all around the bottom, do that. And that way it's going to fit better. You break it into segments. And then what I do, I think of what are, what are the key lines that need, that everything builds from. If so if I was to do this one again, I would draw this line right here. And then I would go around and draw that same line on every segment. That way everything gets filled in right. And in fact, as this builds, if I end up running out of room or need more stuff, I can get it all to fit pretty symmetrically. So after I did this one, I probably would draw out these individual little points I'd probably go across then to the top so I get the right width on it. And, but then once I do this one, I would do the same thing over and over. What I would not do is do the whole segment all at one time and then move on to the next one. It just works out more symmetrically, if you, at least for me, if I do the same thing for each segment and then move on to the second thing and the third thing and so on. Hint number six is to prepare the surface of your pot. The smoother the surface, the easier it is to paint. If you have a lot of undulations and bumps and gouges and things like that, it's just going to hang up your brush. So if you get a nice smooth surface, particularly if you burnish it, your paintbrush is just going to glide across it a lot more smoothly and you won't have the gaps and things. It just It really does make a big difference and this is kind of a challenge for newer potters because sometimes they have a harder time getting a pot to be as smooth as they might like it. But uh, spending some time initially to make sure that your pot is smooth and symmetrical uh, will make your painting a whole lot easier. Okay, hint number seven is to talk about brush strokes. If you look a lot at a lot of Native American pottery that 
say six, seven, eight hundred years old, you see a lot of straight lines. You don't see as many curved lines. Not to say it doesn't exist, but I would bet that the vast majority is straight. And there's a reason for that, at least from my perspective, is that straight lines are a whole lot easier to draw or paint than curved lines. So consider avoiding, if you're fairly new at this business, uh, a curved line, circles and that sort of thing. Straight lines make it a whole lot easier. The other thing is that thick lines are somewhat easier to do than thin lines. If you have a whole lot of thin, parallel, hatching kinds of lines, that can be really difficult to do. Part of it is just the nature of pottery. It is porous, it sucks up the paint, and it's just a little bit harder surface to paint on than, say, uh, oil paints on, on a canvas. However, what you might want to do is uh, to outline things first. Say, for example, with these pointed pieces, whatever that is, uh, what I like to do is take a thin brush and outline really fine things first and then fill that in. That makes it a little bit easier. If you think about contrast, you might want to have uh, an outline on things. And that's what I did with this. This is orange pottery. If I just painted it red, there wouldn't be a whole lot of contrast between the red and the orange. So I outline in it in red or in black and it's, it just kind of jumps out a little bit better that way. The other thing to consider would be short lines versus long lines. Usually, because of the amount of paint on your brush, you're not going to get a line much more lengthy than an inch or two, because again, the pottery just sucks up all the paint. Uh, so if you have really long lines, and I have some of those on this, sometimes they get a little bit blotchy because you're starting and stopping so many different times. Shorter lines are somewhat easier than longer lines. Next hint is that less is sometimes more. Consider that the color of the clay is also one of the colors that you're using and that white space or blank space can be really helpful. Lots of designers know you, if you're going to write, put an ad in a magazine or a newspaper, you want to have a fair amount of black space. Things uh, kind of jump out more. So think about it. That's an, another one of those rules is not get this too complicated. Here is an example. Big. I made a planter for my wife, and I don't have a whole lot of decoration on it. It's really simple. It's big decoration for a big pot. I wouldn't want to have a lot of tiny stuff here. I don't think it would show up well. It'd be distracting. And I've got a fair amount of open space on this as well. So part of your planning is, again, make sure that you don't put on too much. That will, And plus, there's just more opportunity for error, I suppose, when you do that. So plan it out with the idea that less is sometimes more. And a few more hints. Uh, one of the things that I find is that my brushes get clumped up if I use them, particularly the little fine hair brush and if you're using mineral paint. So wash them out fairly often. They just need to be rinsed out easily, dabbed off so they're somewhat dry, and you'll get a more even consistent line because it will change as it gets uh, clumped up. Also, consider using fewer kinds of paint. We traditionally have white, red, and black, uh, but you don't need to use all three of those depending on the nature of the pottery you're doing. So again, that kind of goes to that uh, keep it simple. Think about the contrast. Use one or two colors of paint. Generally will be better. Also, put your paint in a shallow dish, uh, particularly mineral paints with manganese or copper uh, ores. They are heavy and so they settle down. We're gonna mix those with a little bit of clay, but keep it stirred up, keep it a real shallow dish, and you'll have better consistency with your paint. And then I also would suggest taking breaks, take your time. I don't know about you, but if I sit and do the same thing for a long period of time, I start getting spasms in my neck and the steadiness of uh, my painting strokes diminishes. So it's just a good idea to get step uh, up and stretch and so on. I usually every time I get a section done, I get up out of my chair and take a little bit of a break and walk around. Okay, suggestion number nine, the last one. Don't try to be a perfectionist. We are all humans. None of us are perfect. Don't worry about it. 
And in fact, if you go to museums and look at pots, some of them are absolutely exquisite, but many of them aren't. In fact, some of them, no offense, they're just downright sloppy. So uh, what I have seen with a lot of modern potters is this effort to make perfect pots and they're beautiful, there's no doubt about that. But if you want to replicate what was done six, 700 years ago, don't worry about it, it's okay. You are going to make mistakes, that's not a problem. So just embrace it and go with it and don't worry about it. And oftentimes other people won't see your mistakes anyway. You'll know about them, but they probably won't and it'll still look fine. So just go with the flow, don't worry about being perfect. So there you go, nine hints plus a few extras on how to do some basic primitive pottery painting. Thanks for joining me today, I appreciate that. So this is Wes with Airstream Wanderings wishing you health, happiness, peace, and love. Take care, bye-bye.